Okay, hi everybody. Um, sorry that we're getting started a little bit late today. And you will also notice that there is no uh, webcam today. And that is because I am still sick. Uh, I'm really sorry. I have recovered my voice, but I haven't fully recovered uh, the rest of me yet. And I feel no reason to inflict uh, myself on others by making you look at my awful face. Uh, and also, I'm sure you guys are just tired of my face by now. We've got to get somebody else on the stream. Uh, I know you guys probably want to hear from somebody other than me. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start talking. And let's just see if this is working okay. Hello, my name is Randall. Hello, my name is Randall. So we have the Twitch chat poly thing working. If you guys remember, we built that in a previous stream. Uh, what we want to build today is the ability to log into the AWS console using your Twitch credentials. Uh, so I'm sure you guys have seen the, the login with Twitch before. Uh, so if we go over to the Twitch uh, API and we say, uh, we go to the docs and we look for a login. There's typically a login with Twitch thing. Eh, it's not here. Uh, but you guys have used Curse before, and you use, you've used Discord, and you've probably seen, yeah, right here, first page. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, and you've seen that there are different companies that allow you to take your Twitch credentials and use those to authenticate yourself to the application. Well, the AWS Web Console has something similar. Uh, you can assume role with web identity assume role with web identity. And this is part of the security token service, AWS STS. Uh, and this is a pretty powerful service that a lot of people don't use in their day-to-day -day kind of uh, use of AWS. Uh, Cognito depends on STS and Cognito is kind of the uh, or, or Cognito works with STS. Uh, it, it, it's the means by which you can have your mobile applications authenticate into IAM roles. Uh, and one of the real advantages of this is that you can actually go in and say, once I've assumed this role, I want to restrict access uh, for resources to a very specific subset of resources and I can say I only want the user that's been authenticated to have the ability to access the DynamoDB roles uh, that have their name and their key. And the advantage of this is that you you cut out all of the application middleware uh, that you would normally have to build and you give the user direct access to their data to edit and modify it uh, and you can still do that through you know some application middleware to kind of restrict what can and can't happen. Hey but, Randall. Oh hi hi David. Uh, but it allows you to uh, do a lot of the authentication layer and all of this other stuff through IAM, which removes a lot of the kind of frustrating component of building out your own authentication middleware. So just to give you a quick overview here. Uh, this is what we're working with today. We have, I'm gonna move the chat over to the other side here. We, hello, Pajadang. Hello. Uh, we are going to have a an S3 static web page, or actually we might have a, an application like an Elastic Beanstalk or something. So, so we'll have like a, a web app that's gonna have a login with Twitch button. And what that's going to do is that's going to make the OAuth call out to Twitch uh, and grab a token. And this is OAuth 2.0 unless I'm mistaken. So basically you, you have a couple different authorization flows that you can go through with OAuth 2.0. You've got the, uh, the authorization code flow and then you've got the implicit grant flow. The implicit grant flow is typically for uh, client-side JavaScript. Uh, so that would be the S3 static web page approach or for the for mobile applications where you're not concerned about 
uh, those credentials kind of leaking beyond the page that's executing them. Uh, and implicit grant flow is kind of similar to like Java web to JavaScript web tokens. And uh, I, I don't fully understand it and I'm not an expert on it, so I'm not going to pretend to be. But the uh, authorization code flow is what we're going to use because what we're going to do is we're going to manually allow certain users in. Uh, and we'll build a little voting mechanism that allows us to vote which user has the next 15 minutes of access to, to the AWS console. And your goal is to, in 15 minutes, find a way to preserve your access to the AWS account. And this AWS account will be completely deleted at, after 24 hours. Um, and we may not get it all working today. And if we don't get it all working to get today, then uh, on Tuesday, uh, I'll, I'll run this again. And, and basically the goal is going to be for those of you watching to... Posi cool. Hello. Uh, Are you only streamer at AWS? Suki Salva asks, am I the only streamer at AWS? Uh, unfortunately for right now, I am indeed the only streamer, but I am very hopeful that we'll have more people available soon. Uh, and if you guys have topics that you would like to have discussed on the stream... Uh, I am more than happy to talk about those with you. So please, please, please tell me what you want to see and uh, tweet at me or shoot me an email and I will happily update uh, the info. Uh, and again, for those of you who missed it earlier, I am still quite uh, sick and that's why I don't have the webcam up today. Uh, my apologies. I will put this little... Uh, um, banner out so you guys know who i am uh here we go aws youtube is ran by other people uh it is or run by other people even um but we all work together and we all kind of do the same stuff so there we go um oops uh so our goal today is to build out as much of the infrastructure for this uh, uh, what is it called? This Twitch plays as we can. Uh, and then your goal, the either this week if we get it done or next week on Tuesday if we get it done, your goal is to try to maintain your access to the AWS console. Uh, for as long as possible. So I'm going to have a Lambda function that's going and running and you guys aren't going to have permissions to modify it or edit it. And what it's going to do is it's going to remove your ability uh, to to uh, continue to have access to the console. So it's it's kind of like a little hackathon. It's, it's a little capture the flag scenario. But uh, I think I've explained enough. Um, so we're going to have this login with Twitch button. Uh, and that is going to take the authorization code and chuck it into Dynamo. And then we are going to... Uh, Ian 678 <laughs> And we are going to uh, take that and based on username or some other mechanism uh, update I am to allow that user to assume console access. Uh, and this will be done through STS assume role with web identity. Uh, and to my knowledge, no one has ever connected Twitch login with AWS console access before. Uh, so I'm sure we may run into to some bugs or, or other issues. Uh, but assuming we can get fairly far along today, uh, what I'm hoping is we can get everything working up to this point and then we can kind of work on the voting mechanism on Tuesday. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I have some stuff that I built years ago um, to give my friends on Facebook access to uh, uh, my web to my AWS account so they could spin up servers 
Um, and this is way before I ever worked at uh, Amazon. And I don't remember exactly how it all worked. Uh, but essentially, what I think we're going to need to do here is we're going to have to have, you know, import Bodo 3. Photo three, or we're gonna have an STS client, and that's gonna be something like. Uh, well, we may not actually need that because I'm I haven't used uh, STS in Photo three yet. So let's look and see what that looks like. So. Has anybody worked with Bodo 3 and STS before? The last time I worked with this was uh, when Bodo was still around and, and we didn't have Bodo 3 yet. So Bodo3.client, STS, and then I think we'll probably do assume role with web identity. Uh, and then what is this gonna say? This is gonna say returns a set of temporary security credentials. Uh, calling assume role with web identity does not require the use of AWS security credentials. Therefore, you can distribute an application. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Nine hundred seconds is fifteen minutes. So that's that's the minimum time. Uh, so we're gonna make that. So the default time is one hour, but we're gonna make it 15 minutes. So we just need to see what the arguments for all of this are. Um, gotcha. So this is a cool little Web Identity Federation playground. Uh, and this lets you sign in with Google and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, maybe I could add onto this afterwards and add in Twitch. Um, so let's let's try the Facebook sign in and see kind of how this all works. Does this work? Cannot read. Let's try logging with Amazon. This web identity stuff. This is the trust policy we have. Uh, and you guys can see this is basically just an IAM trust policy that says uh, if the app ID is such and such, um, and then we put in our Amazon account ID. Uh, then yeah, call assume role with web identity. And then we get all this back. And we proceed to step three. Uh, and we can make a call. Uh, yeah, and so it kind of works. So, uh, and then we have a couple more seconds until the token expires. So what we're interested in seeing here is how all of this stuff comes together. Uh, and I'm figuring this out along with you guys, so forgive me if I don't know exactly how to do it off the top of my head. There should be request syntax. So uh, what we're gonna have here is the roll arn, uh, which I will look up later. Uh, we'll have to make it. Uh, the role session name. Let's let's go through these as they're required. An identifier, and this is going to be like the Twitch login. Um, so we'll figure that out. Twitch. We'll figure out how to get that in a second. On uh, the Arn to do. Uh, and then the next one is the web identity token. The web identity, I can never spell. For those of you who have seen me stream before, 
spelling is absolutely the hardest part of this job. And this is going to be our OAuth token. Um, and then we're going to have the provider ID. Ah, so we may have already hit a snag here in that uh, well this isn't required so we don't have to do this um, okay and then we have an IAM policy I don't think we really need this currently Amazon and Facebook are only supported blah 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 D yeah I don't I don't think that's necessarily true because you can set it up to take in anything. Right. Uh, at least I hope. Um, if I'm wrong, then this is going to be a very short stream. Uh, and then we're going to say duration seconds equals uh, 900 because David said use developer authenticated, which I don't know what that means, sorry. Um, and I don't really think we need this because the, the get or assume role with web identity call returns all of the credentials that we need, our session token and the expiration. Uh, so, uh, this will be credentials. Uh, and then we have to pass those in somehow. Uh, and I will figure out how to do that in Boda 3 in a little bit. Uh, the roll iron is going to be iron, AWS, I am my long account number, roll. Uh, Twitch Federated Login. Uh, and then the role session name is going to be uh, the Twitch Login. And we'll figure out how to get that in a moment. Uh, and the Web Identity Token is going to be the OAuth Token. Um, let's see here. So this all looks like it worked. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we have to figure out how to do all this Twitch stuff. Uh, so uh, I think that's basically going to be a Flask app that we're running. So we're going to say import Flask, import OS. Um, and we're going to say that you know our Twitch uh, secret equals... Uh, OS dot get or well our Twitch app ID or client I, I don't know client ID equals uh, OS dot get env Twitch client ID uh, and then our app secret is going to be Twitch app secret or client secret sorry equals OS dot get env Twitch client secret. Uh, and then we basically just do the OAuth that we need to do, which we can do through requests. I think is probably the best way of doing that. Import request, import request, OAuth lib. Uh, and, or is this, a, is this an underscore? Um, and I recently was working on something where I, I did deal with Twitch OAuth. So let me see if I can find that really fast. Um, MD find requests OAuth lib. So I'm just, I'm in another tab here going through trying to see if I can find uh, my old... Uh, Twitch stuff where I did the Twitch OAuth. Uh, let's 
So and I built a Docker file and everything for it. Wow, that was a long time ago. Uh, okay, so basically we'll have, uh, well, I'm gonna make all of this a little bit smaller for the moment. Uh, so we're gonna have an app and that app is gonna be flask name. Uh, and then we're gonna have def get twitch off. Uh, state equals none and token equals token uh, force verify is going to be true because what we want to do is we want to make sure every time these people come in they go ahead and reauthorize because unless I remember correct incorrectly twitch does not have any means of logging out Deauthorize or deauthorizing an application. So by doing force verify equals true every time you're allowing the user to to kind of rebuild. Um, so then from I think we do this like this. So from request oauth lib import oauth to or sorry oauth to session, uh, and then from oauth lib dot oauth to import token expired error. Uh, and this may or may not work because I might need to go like requests oauth lib dot oauth to, uh, but we'll try it anyway. So uh, let's see what else we need to do here. We're gonna need a table to store all of this in. So uh, I'll create a little DynamoDB table. Uh, DDB equals boto three dot resource uh, DynamoDB. And I probably spelled that wrong, DynamoDB. I did not, that's the first. Uh, and then table will say Twitch off. Um, and we'll call this, uh, what are we gonna call this? Uh, we'll call this delete me. And we'll call this application. Okay, so we don't really need to specify that this is Twitch though. Uh, so I'll just make this a little easier. So we're gonna have a client ID and a client secret. Uh, and we're sorry, I'm all over the place here. I'm just trying to get my thoughts organized. Uh, and this is gonna be the magic. So we'll take a look at this again later. Uh, but if, okay, so get twitch auth state equals none, token equals none. And if there is an existing token, then we want to return an OAuth to session uh, with a client ID, and then the token equals token, and then for certify equals uh, I think. Um, hmm. so I think that we should, uh, sorry, <laughs> let me turn off text messages. Uh, so, uh, state equals none, token equals token. We don't really need to pass in that. How was your schedule today, smile? Uh. Ooh, invited to out. D? 
yeah i i am i am very sick so i will probably not be going out but uh so basically we're going to say return oauth to session client id token and we're going to pass in force verify true equals every time so we don't really need to um do that ourselves so then we have a state if there's a state then we want to return a new oauth to session oauth to session with the tell to watch your stream with the client ID, with the state equals state, uh, and the redirect URI is going to be, uh, uh, we're gonna need this, right? So we're gonna need some sort of API listening uh, somewhere. So redirect URI. is gonna be, for the time being, we'll just say api.manman.com slash twitch auth. Um, and then we're gonna need the, uh, the auth2 session stuff too, aren't we? Uh, so we're gonna need the base login URLs, I guess. That's gonna be uh, HTTPS, uh, this can't be HTTPS because I don't have a certificate for it yet. Oh, well. Uh, well, maybe I can. I don't know. We'll try. Um, API.twitch.tv slash Kraken, I think, is the uh, URL. And then authorize URL is going to be something like uh, base URL plus oauth2 slash authorize uh, something like that anyway cool uh, okay so if state redirect uri is going to be redirect uri uh, otherwise oauth equals oauth2 session uh, client id Redirect URI, uh, redirect URI, and scope equals nothing. Uh, and then we return OAuth. So I don't really even need that. I can just be like, yeah. Okay. So this is our our really hacky method that we can call in just about any circumstances with any parameters and hopefully it should create the session that we need. Uh, so now we're gonna have basically two routes that we need to build. We're gonna have the Twitch auth route um, or auth. And this is gonna be the one that logs us in and that's where this credential stuff is gonna go. This is gonna be the one that like redirects us to the console. Um, so this is gonna be app route twitch auth. Uh, and I haven't built any of this before. I, I know I say that all the time and I don't know if you guys believe me or not, but I really am just sort of like flying by the seat of my pants here. So it's very possible we will delete all of this code and rewrite it uh, when I come up with a better idea in like 10 minutes. Uh, and this is gonna be app route. Uh, I guess Twitch login, maybe? That seems like a reasonable thing. And then we'll have, uh, we don't really need anything else right now. I mean, we could have other stuff, but we're not going to because I'm lazy. Uh, main, then app.run. Peach underscore auth. Oh, thanks. Nice catch. Yeah, that was a typo. Uh, and debug equals true. Uh, and I'm going to take a quick break. As I mentioned, I am ill. So I will be back in just a moment. Uh, give me like two, three minutes.
Alexa, play music. Frown. Okie dokie. Sorry about that. We are back. Um, and I have got some Coca-Cola, so we can continue streaming shortly. So... This is the part where I actually have to think about the logic of how all of this works, which is probably where the entire stream falls apart. Uh, but basically what we wanna do is we wanna create kind of like this STS connection object um, and then call into the sign in AWS amazon.com federation page uh, with those tokens. So uh, it, it'll look a little bit like this. Um, so we'll have this like auth URL equals da da da. And then we'll have uh, these credentials that we get here. Um, uh, credentials, and then basically we'll make this request, request.get uh, to auth URL with uh, like, what is this going to look like? This is going to be, um, it, it basically looks like this. It's going to be an action, uh, and I don't remember what that action is called, and then it's going to have a session. And the session is just going to be this credentials object. Uh, but I don't, I think the action is get sign in token. Uh, Let's look it up. So AWS console login get sign in token. Creating a URL that enables federated users to access AWS management console, custom federation broker. Cool. So this this is what we need. Um Ooh, example code using Python. Uh, this is really old example code. Let me just make a note to update this. Um, so this is using old Bodo. And we're using new Bodo because I guess that's what we, we are supposed to do. I wonder if this has a federated thing built into it. Get federation token. An access key, a secret access key, and a security for a federated user. 
get Federation token. Uh, we don't really need this because we will already have it. Um, maybe we don't even want assume role with web identity. That's what I'm starting to think is we may not even need that. <sighs> so, Uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes in here. What is a what does Twitch post back to us here? So getting an access token. The authorization code flow. First, send the user you want to authenticate to this URL. Authorize response type code and client ID. Redirect URI state. Uh, and then you should. Uh, get an access token. So after this is done, we'll get an authorization code. And then we use that authorization code to get the access token. Uh, and then the response is the access token and the scope. Gotcha. So basically, the way it works is uh, web app redirects browser to api.twitch.tv slash kraken no auth two whatever and then that redirects to api.ranman.com slash twitch authorized uh, which redirects or which comes with this code uh, code equals authorization code uh, so we need to add that as the parameter um, Uh, so let's see. Uh -huh. So this is where we do the 302 like redirect thing, 302 redirect. Um, so this is just going to be uh does flask have a built-in redirect does anybody remember uh i think it does uh i think it's like uh flask uh redirect and then Session. We don't really need session. Uh, yeah, that that should do it. So let's see. We got all this stuff. Da -da -da -da. Request get. Oh, I was I was on a. This is pretty ADD web development right here. Sorry, we were looking to see if get sign in token was the right call, and I got totally sidetracked. Get sign. -in. Yeah, that, that is the right action. Okay, cool. Oh, and I need to pass in session duration too. Um, cool. So I don't even know that we need this assume role with web identity thing anymore. Uh, we may still keep it, but that might be the wrong approach. Uh, so credentials, oh, that's already gonna have the duration seconds, good. Um, cool. Uh, or will it have the duration seconds? Let's see what the response looks like. Session duration. So 
it needs to have the key session duration, not so assume role with web identity. So if we go down here and we look at what the response looks like, uh, it has an expiration, but it doesn't have a session duration. So we need to take uh, session duration. Uh, so creds session duration. So what we really need to do is we need to make another credentials object. So we can call this like uh, assume role response uh, and then we're going to create a little credentials object and that credentials object is going to look like what this sign in token thing wants sign in aws amazon.com slash federation the request must include an action and session parameters and optionally if used assume rule a session duration uh, so this Session duration, the URL encoded JSON string created in steps three and four, security token. So that, that's all going to be right. I won't have to do anything there uh, based on this response. Access key, secret access key, session token, session ID, session key. Well, hmm. Actually, it seems like I might need to change this up. Uh, huh, huh. Maybe there's a better way of doing all of this. Let's see in what. Let's see what the other STS assume role methods are. Um, oh, who said Alexa play music? <laughs> I've learned. I've learned from these tricks, and I've unplugged uh, Alexa now uh, when I'm doing these streams. So I might be able to just call assume role. Yeah, I think we should just do assume role instead of assume role with web identity. So we're just going to go like this. Uh, where? So we're just going to say assume role. Uh, and all that really takes is a role session name, which is going to be the Twitch stuff coming in. Um, so are we going to have any other identifying information about the Twitch user that's being, we're going to need something. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. How are we going to get all of this to work? We might be better off using the flask OAuth package. I'm trying to decide here. Yeah, I think we might be better off doing it this way. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take some of this stuff out. We are going to redo this. Uh, so we're going to say, uh, import or so okay, from flask OAuth import OAuth. Uh, redirect URI. And then we're going to have a OAuth equals OAuth. And that's basically going to be uh, 
which OAuth equals uh, OAuth dot remote app Twitch. I haven't used this library in a long time, but I remember it because I remember how many times I had to mess with it to get it working. And this is going to be this like HTTPS Kraken thing. Uh, and then request token URL is going to be none because it's OAuth 2. Uh, but the access token URL is going to be this thing. Uh, and I don't know if I need to put a slash here or not. We'll put it there for now. And the authorized URL is going to be, oh, no, sorry. This is the authorized URL. Uh, and Let's see, this is going, well, damn, I don't remember any of this. Let's look it up. Flask OAuth. This is a pretty old library. I don't even know that it's been updated recently. Four years ago was the last update. I wonder if there's a better way of doing this now. Flask OAuth. Flask OAuth lib. Uh, okay, let's use this instead. That wasn't very helpful. How, where's like a getting started, a quick, quick getting started? Here we go. So OAuth lib import OAuth. Uh, OAuth.remote app. So this is all the same. Twitch base URL, request token URL. There isn't one. Access token URL. I gotta go look it up again. It's it's one of these. Uh, and then uh, oops. App or app key is gonna be um, Twitch. There we go. Uh, and then we can say app dot config Twitch equals client. Or consumer key, consumer secret, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go look at this example, this github.py one. Uh, so here we go. So we have github is oauth.remote app. This is very confusing. make this smaller. I know it's harder for you guys to read when it's smaller, but it's harder for me to program when I don't have all the context. Um, so app is going to be that. And then OAuth is going to be Flask app. And then Twitch OAuth is going to be Twitch with the base URL um, and request token params. Uh, I'll figure out what the scope we need in a little bit is. Uh, An access token method is going to be post. Oh, that's true. Access token URL. So, what is the access token URL for uh, token? Cool. So, that's going to be this. Uh, authorized URL is going to be this. I don't really need this base. Where are you currently building? 
Hello, Jack Johnson. That's actually one of my favorite artists. I saw him at uh, Kabo in San Diego recently. Uh, our goal today is to build this little thingy, which lets us log into Twitch or log into the Amazon Web Services console with your Twitch login, and you'll be able to wreak havoc for uh, 15 minutes and try and maintain your access. Uh, and I'll delete the account every 24 hours. Uh, and my end goal is for this to just work indefinitely and and it to be kind of a capture the flag game. Uh, so we don't need this base URL nonsense. Uh, but we do need this. So right now I'm working on the OAuth portion, which is, uh, for those of you who have worked with OAuth before, tremendous fun. Uh, actually, maybe we do need the base URL. The problem is this isn't very well documented which parameters I need and don't need. Um, so api.twitch.tv slash kraken um, and then access token method is post uh, and access token url all of this is this is good this is all right and i guess i don't need the app key but that's probably because uh, they already passed in these credentials. I hope these aren't real credentials. Like, if the person who made this put this in, I mean, I guess it wouldn't really matter, right? Because they probably don't have real permissions or anything. Twitch OAuth. Should I just call this Twitch instead? I think I will. Twitch OAuth is a long name to type. So, uh, so yeah, this is going to be this and consumer secret uh, which is going to be this and I'm going to change these to be consumer consumer ID and uh, consumer secret We'll delete these variables, and this is actually starting to look like a real application. Not that we've run it yet, so it's not like we would know. Um, so yeah, uh, app route twitch auth. So basically, we want this like twitch login URL to do. Uh, return twitch dot authorize URL or yeah, authorize URL callback equals URL for where is that defined this this authorized login slash authorize so they have like this token getter method so this is gonna be the at Twitch dot token getter def get twitch oauth token ay 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 return session okay so we do need session session return session dot get github token and this is not a GitHub token, it's a Twitch token. Uh, so, where do we put that? So, huh. URL for authorized, I guess. That just must be something that they set. External equals true. Ay, 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 ay. So this is the thing that does the actual work of getting the token. Login slash authorized. 
authorized. Uh, and that's that's basically what we want this stuff to do. Okie dokie. So we'll say response equals twitch dot authorized response. If response is none or response dot get uh, access token is none, then return access denied uh, 403 session otherwise session twitch token equals response x oops access I cannot spell to save my life access token uh, and I assume this is like an expiry or something um, so then me equals uh, twitch dot get. Okay, so what's the Twitch API? Twitch API. The Kraken API, I'm sure it has some sort of like user profile info. Uh, so we'll just look and see what that is really fast. Um, so. So what are the what are the APIs here? Oh, here are the scopes. Uh, user read. I'm pretty sure that's the only scope we need. Uh, log into chat and send messages. We don't need any of that. Yeah, so user user read is the only only scope we need. Uh, so where do I pass that in again? Oh, I think that's up here. Scope equals user read cool uh, right where, where did scope get passed in okay request token params so request token params equals scope user read so that works uh, I'm going to move this up to be next to the access to it. That's the order that I want it all in. I don't know why you have to put in a base URL if you're already doing all this other stuff. Anyway, so then we have this kind of like token getter method. We have a login method. Where is this login? Method? So we'll put login first. And that says get me the URL for authorized, which is this method, which is the one that's gonna do all of the stuff for us. Uh, and basically, we just want to store this access token there. And then we want to get some user info, like the uh, 
what do we want? We just want like who the user is. So Uh, gets a user object based on the OAuth token provided. So then we just say dot get user. Um, it's gonna be user, and then we say user. What's that six tab warning thing? S. Six tab warning thing. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Six tab. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Um, but if you clarify, I will find out what it is. Uh, and then user, let's see what it returns. Example response, ID, display name. So what we want is display browser name. Oh, that warning, it's, it's, it's what we use to file expense reports. And it's just telling me that I, I just got back from New York this morning. Um, and it's telling me that I need to file my expense report or it's telling me that I'm about to be logged out of the application. Who knows? Um, so then uh, display name equals, or here, we'll just take all this. So role session name is gonna be user display name, uh, web identity token. We don't really need this anymore, I don't think, um, but I'll leave it there in case we do. Uh, and then I'll fill out all this stuff in a second, but in the meantime, let's just print out to user, uh, and then we'll put all the rest of this to the side. Uh, and then we'll run this and we'll see what happens. Excuse me. So I think this is all the OAuth stuff we need. Um, so basically what we need to do after after we, we get this Twitch user is we'll just go through and we'll say, uh, we'll assume the role, we will get a sign-in URL. Um, I, I actually know how to do all that. So let me go ahead and like, figure all that out really fast and like populate it so that I don't forget to do this later. Um, so where where is this? Okay, so basically we say the credentials um, equals, so let me just uncomment all this out really fast. So the credentials is gonna be the, uh, the, Uh, assume, assume role response credentials. Well, let's see what STS looks like. Assume role returns request syntax looks like that. External ID. What is external ID? Yeah, we'll say external ID equals user display name. So role, role session name, an identifier for the assumed role session. Use the role session name to uniquely identify a session. External ID. External ID is going to be user ID or something. So this will be ID, I think. So let's look one more time at the Twitch. Yeah, this will be underscore ID. Does Twitch use MongoDB since it returns this underscore ID? I don't think they do because that's not a MongoDB object ID. So, or maybe they do, who knows? I'd be interested to find out. Um, that's kind of like a MongoDB timestamp. These are the questions, my friends. These are the questions. Um, and I could probably use like email or something. Uh, 
So role session name, but we'll use display name for now. And the external ID, let's just let's just leave leave all this other stuff out. Actually, um, let's stop messing around and try and get this done because we've got another 40 minutes, and I want to get it so that you guys can log in and mess around really fast. Uh, okay, so this is what the response looks like. The response is a JSON document. It's a dictionary, and it has credentials. So uh, the credentials are going to be access key. I always spell it wrong. Access key ID. Um, it's going to be secret access key ID, uh, and then it's going to be session token. Session. Um, and these are going to Would be... Would you mind explaining the entire authentication flow? Sure. Uh, I'll walk through the entire authentication flow. Um, basically, we'll have this... And who asked that question? Uh, Jack Johnson. Cool. So what we have is we're going to have a web app, uh, and it's going to be a Flask web app, and it's going to have a URL like slash login. Uh, and that slash login URL is going to say... Uh, it's going to redirect... Uh, to Twitch based on the document here, uh, here, yes. Um, it's going to redirect and it's going to use this thing called the authorization flow. Um, so we will return a redirect to this page with these parameters um, and I'll post that URL in chat. And what it's basically HTTPS colon slash. That is an awful, awful thing for it to be saying out loud. Sorry. Slash guides slash authentication slash hashtag authorization code flow. I'm really glad it said hashtag though instead of number sign. Um, so basically, the the authorization page is gonna pop up a little Twitch login thing, um, and you will say, yes, I authorize this application to use my Twitch login, at which point uh, you guys get redirected to back to the site that is hosting the web page. Uh, and part of the URL params for that is this uh, like authorization code. And then I use that authorization code that Twitch has given me to get an access token. And the access token is the thing that lets me perform actions on your behalf. Uh, and I grab that access token by making a post request back to Twitch uh, with my client ID, my client secret, the grant type, the 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 redirect URI, and, and all the other stuff, and that that code that I just got in this other request, uh, and that'll give me back this uh, JSON document, which is the access token. And all I use the access token for is in application.py, I use it to go and get um, some information about the Twitter, the Twitch user. And then I use that information to create a federated sign-in page um, that I redirect the user to. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second. Um, and then you basically have a 15 minute timed access to the AWS console. Uh, so let's just see really fast session ID, um, session key, and this is gonna be a session token. And I don't think I need duration or anything like that. Um, and then where's this auth URL stuff? Okay. So I'm going to do this slightly differently. So the auth URL is here. And then I basically make this request. Uh, and this will return a JSON document, um, response.json. Uh, 
and then I'll get from that a sign in token and then I'll take this kind of per this let me take this params thing out actually so params is gonna be like this and then I'll pass it in here Uh, and then this is going to be my sign in token. And then I'll do params.update. Uh, action. And instead of get sign in token, this time it'll be login. Uh, and then the issuer will be, uh, for now it'll be ranman.com. Uh, and then the destination will be the console. Uh, so HTTPS console.aws.amazon.com, uh, blah, 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 blah. And the sign in token will be sign in token. So there's really absolutely no reason for me to move this param. Oh yeah, because then I don't have to update the session token again. Okay, cool. That's all. That's all good. All right. So then we'll say uh, URL equals request dot request um, get. Sorry, I think it's get uh, auth URL and then params equals param. And uh, then we say prepare, let me say URL, and this is the poor man's method of uh, getting the URL that you want to redirect to without having to like compose all of the arguments and everything. And then we do redirect URL, uh, and that will send our users into the AWS console. Uh, but before we do all of this, I just want to make sure that the basics are working. Um, and I am ready to do that. So I am going to, in another tab, set some environment variables from Twitch, which will take me a moment. I apologize. Apps.twitter.com. Uh, I have been reading a lot about Alexander Hamilton recently because I'm sure you guys are aware Hamilton is coming to New York, uh, to um, uh, Los Angeles soon. And I'm very, very excited about that. So let me close all of these, sorry. Um, and I also use Reddit. Uh, so apps.twitch.tv or developers, twitch.tv. dev.twitch.tv, uh, developer portal. Well, this is interesting. I do not seem to be able to log in to Twitch. Wow, this is really weird. Um, okay, so this is the end of the stream, I guess, because I can't create a Twitch application until my account is verified. Uh, but, uh, well, damn. Thanks for the stream, by the way. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. Well, I'm glad it's fun to watch. I just, I'm frustrated that we weren't able to get it working. I'm extremely frustrated by that, actually. 
I was under the impression that I had already created a uh, a Twitch like app. Um, I I could switch this over to Facebook really fast, but let's not do that. Um, okay, so we'll pick this up again on Tuesday once my account is verified. Um, but just so you guys are aware, we have all the pieces in place. Um, the only things that are left to do are to create a Lambda function that kind of reset, or to create an IAM policy that kind of limits what the Twitch user can do. Uh, and then, uh, for instance, we don't want them to be able to like delete the root account, access keys, all this other stuff. We, we basically want to give give the Twitch user free reign over everything, like launch whatever instances you want. If you want an X1, launch an X1. Um, but we don't want to enable them to like do malicious stuff. So I will talk about crafting that IAM policy next time. Um, and I'm really sorry that there doesn't seem to be any way for me to to get my account verified faster. Uh, before I go, do you guys have any questions about this whole section that I've highlighted here and how it all works? Um, I think I think the OAuth stuff from above is pretty obvious in, in how it works, but this is the section that's like AWS specific that people don't always understand. This is essentially the uh, this is the workflow that we are following. And it'll generate a URL that looks like this for getting the sign-in token. And then we'll get another URL that looks like this. That will be our, um, uh, our like URL to log in. Uh, okay, cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry that this uh, stream is has ended prematurely. Um, on Tuesday, we will be. Uh, I, I'll be back in New York on Tuesday, so I'll I'll still be uh, uh, streaming at at two p.m. to four p.m. Eastern or Western. Uh, but. I am not guaranteed super fast internet, so I may have some issues, and I won't have the same issue. I won't have the same setup that I have here with the fancy microphone and all that. Uh, but I will be at the AWS Pop Up Loft, uh, and I'd be happy to kind of show you guys around the AWS Pop Up Loft on uh, on Tuesday next week, and then on Thursday I'll be back in LA, and we will build some more stuff with recognition. Uh, and then hopefully next week we will have some new streamers. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a good day.